This is gonna be epic. Hello there, B Jack Clean team. It's Ryan. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. If you haven't been here before, I'm a former F 15E combat fighter pilot, F 16 Thunderbird pilot, and current commercial pilot, and someone on the B Jack Clean Instagram, and actually also in the comments on this channel, asked me to break down taking a cable in a fighter jet and carrier operations. So ask and you shall receive, my friend. And stay to the very end of this video because I'm gonna share with you, moi, taking a cable in Bagram Air Force Base, Afghanistan, in a 70,000 pound Strike Eagle. It was fully loaded with gas, bombs, and bullets. Whew. You're gonna love that video, so definitely stay to the end for that. But before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button for me, and hey, maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, you create a mini sonic boom somewhere in the world. And that's a beautiful thing my friend. With that said, let's dive into taking a cable in a fighter jet and carrier operations. Here we go. So guys, as we begin, let's address the elephant in the room or the chimpanzee at the bar. That's a thing. Look it up. So I have not taken off or landed on a carrier. So what I did for this video is I got some inside information from some naval aviators, some really good friends of mine. One of my good friends was Blue Angel One, and I have a lot of naval friends who have been so kind and so gracious as to give me some of their experience, and I'll be leaning on that for the carrier side. I have taken cables many a times in a fighter jet, albeit uh, I pretty much didn't want to every single time because in the F-15E, taking a cable meant that we had a dual hydraulic failure and there was a strong chance that the brakes would not work. So I got to experience it in uh, an emergency situation. But taking that cable was a wild experience and I'm excited to show you that video at the very end of this. So when I finished my second operational tour in the F-15E, raging around in that beast was so much fun. I got to do it outside of Mountain Home Air Force Base, Idaho, raging through the canyons in the deserts of Idaho were just Oh, can't say enough good about those. We'll talk about those more in a different video. But at the end of that tour, three paths diverged in a wood and I chose the badass path. Yeah, that's a quote, look it up. So those three paths in the wood were to go do a naval exchange tour and take off and land off of boats. The second one was to go to Australia and fly the F-18. That one sounds like a real hardship tour. That's a big sacrifice to go do that. The third one was to throw my hat in the ring, to throw my bowl in the arena, something like that, and go to attempt to be a Thunderbird. So I chose the third one. I chose to attempt to be a Thunderbird and it worked out, super grateful for that. Do I sometimes wonder what it would have been like to go into the Navy for a while and land and take off on carriers? You betcha, because it's worth me saying I have so much respect for naval aviators. As a matter of fact, a lot of my good friends are naval aviators, and I wanna to say to them a thousand tips of the hat. No, seriously, I'm gonna tip my hat a thousand times. Here we go, one, two, three. 72 hours later. 998, 999, a thousand. There, are you happy? But in all seriousness, guys, I have so much respect for those that have taken off and landed on carriers, and I'll be using some of their suggestions for this video as we dive in and we watch some of these takeoffs and landings. But first, I wanna tell you about some keys to success to taking a cable with a fighter jet. So the first thing is you gotta prepare. When you're taking a cable in an F-15E, you have to do a few different steps and review a few things because it's not something that we do every single day like someone who's landing on carriers does. So what I would do is review the checklist with my Wizzo and what we would do is we would lock our shoulder harness and then keep in mind that anytime you take a cable, it's gonna slam you forward, obviously. So you need to be prepared for that. It might sound simple, but at the end of the day, it's gonna take you to a stop like that. And you will see that in the videos we're gonna review for the Navy and also the video of myself taking that cable, which uh, is just, ah, it was awesome. So I'm excited for you guys to see that. And then what you need to do is remember that you need to put your nose down as soon as you land. So none of this squeaking it on. And that's essentially where the Navy gets the reputation for slamming their jets onto the runway, because ultimately you don't want to try to grease it on and then miss a cable or have your nose in the air when you take that cable. Because if you were to do that, if your nose gear was up and it slammed down, it's going to be a bad 
day. You're most likely going to get a nose gear going through the front of your fighter jet. That one's not going to buff out. With that said, guys, let's dive in and let's watch some carrier operations and I will react to what I'm seeing. All right, so they're going from like zero to 140 miles an hour in about two seconds. So again, tip of the hat to the aviators doing this. Super badass. Okay, so this boat here has four cables. The newer ships don't have four, they have three due to some modifications that have been made and just the technology has gotten better. Also with the new cables, they're made out of a poly core material that is essentially stronger than the woven steel that some of the old cables were made out of and that's what allows them to go down to three cables. But these things on the ship are essentially slowing down the aircraft with massive hydraulic lifts underneath that absorb the energy of that aircraft. A 50,000 pound F-18 going 150 miles an hour, getting stopped like that is a massive amount of energy. So being able to absorb that underneath is just some super impressive technology. Hey, BJ Clean Team, it's Ryan. I've stopped again by my favorite rock wall in the middle of the woods to tell you about bjetclean.com. It's a company I created with a fellow fighter pilot and mainstream soaps have the same ingredients as car wash soaps. So the gig is up. These are natural based products. They have your best interest at mind. Most of all, these two bottles replace seven products in your bathroom. Your bathroom will never be cooler than to have fighter jets in it. So check us out, bjetclean.com. We've got t-shirts over there as well. Now back to the video. I just think it's cool to remember that's not only fighters taking off and landing on carriers, it's bigger aircraft like that. So to those doing that in those bigger aircraft, you have cojones, my friend. Well done. So overall, again, a thousand tips of the hat to those taking off and landing on carriers. And I wanna give a quick shout to the crews that are working on the decks of carriers. One of the most dangerous jobs in the world, these guys and gals actually wear self-inflating automatic floating coats because there's a chance they get knocked overboard by a jet blast. There are nets on the side of the carrier, but those won't always catch you if you get an F-18, a Rhino, shooting its thrust and knocking you off into the water. These coats have lights on them to help get you rescued, but that just shows how ballsy it is. So again, tip of the hat. Now I wanna take a peek at that F-35 that happens to crash on the deck of the carrier. Again, I don't recommend releasing things that shouldn't be released, but at the end of the day, this is out there, so we're going to watch it and I'll talk about it. Who's the one that's yelling fire firefighter? Okay, so the landing signals officer is essentially saying wave off, wave off, wave off. He's telling this pilot go around. This is not looking good. What I see out of the F-35 is what looks to me like a slower approach because the angle of attack gets pretty steep there in game. And when that happens, bad things can happen because the jet just kind of starts to sink and fall. I see a lot of different control movement happening. So obviously the pilot's 
trying to make something happen, but whether it was a malfunction with the aircraft or I don't know. I don't know what it was, but ultimately at the end of the day, no one will know until the investigation is complete. So we'll wait for that before I make any assumptions. So you made it to the end of the video, my friend. And I'm a man of my word. Of course, I'm gonna give you that bonus of myself taking that cable at Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Now, just a wild experience taking a cable in a probably a 75,000 pound fighter jet, fully loaded with bombs, missiles, bullets, and gas. End of the day, what can happen is if you don't take the cable in the center, I've seen this happen before, it can actually throw your jet off the runway, can make your jet tumble, so many bad things can happen. So making sure you take it directly in the center is a huge pro tip that I will throw at you. And then making sure your shoulder harness is locked. So you're not thrown forward and maybe you push the stick or you bump something. Maybe you hit a rudder pedal. So you gotta make sure you're securely locked in that seat. The last thing is making sure you get that nose down so you're not taking a cable with your nose in the air. So this was my attempt at landing like a naval aviator. Let's check it out. All right, so right there at the beginning at the 11 second mark, you can see a whole bunch of sparks just fly out as I touch down on the runway. Obviously I'm doing a firm touchdown and then that tail hook is scraping and throwing up a whole bunch of sparks. So you can hear it, it's like kook, that's when the tail hook takes that cable. With these Air Force cables, a lot of them are weighed down by massive chains that would essentially be like the chains for the anchors on an aircraft carrier. These chains are insanely huge. And when you take that cable, it just starts pulling them out and they help you dissipate the energy. Now, the big thing that I'm doing now is if you let that cable pull you backwards, again, it can start to bend and move as it hits different things on the ground. So if you let it do that, there's a chance it'll flip you to the side and that's when your jet could tip over. You could do extreme amounts of damage to the jet. So you'll be able to hear it here in a second. It already started a little bit, but I'm essentially jockeying that throttle. As soon as I feel any movement pulling me backwards, I'm like, Boom! I'm plugging in the throttle to make the nozzles tighten and shoot, keep me in position. And you hear that, yeah, I'm good at sound effects if you didn't know already. <laughs> but if you, as you hear that, that's essentially the nozzles going in and out. And I'm doing that to keep myself in position until the emergency crews arrive and the chains kind of settle down and it's not trying to pull me back further. All right, I think I got that strike ego pretty much settled out. So there you go, guys. I hope you have a bit of an understanding of the mindset and mentality of taking a cable in a fighter jet. Whew, if that doesn't get your blood flowing, I don't know what will. And again, a tip of the hat to all those that are landing and taking off on carriers on the daily. It's really cool. Ah, here I am again, friends, by my trusty rock wall. And I thought today about a challenge. What challenge are you facing? What is it that seems daunting to you? Are you trying to become a fighter pilot? Are you trying to become the next Thunderbird pilot? Well, my challenge to you is think about it like this rock wall. Now, this rock wall wasn't easy to build. There's sharp edges on each one of these rocks. Someone, not me, put these rocks in their place but they started with that bottom rock down at the very bottom. They started, they started with action and they grabbed that rock and they put it in its place. And they didn't think about this top rock up here when they were building that first bottom layer. So what's your bottom layer? What can you do today to overcome the challenge that you're looking to overcome? Maybe you just need to start with the first rock.
Thanks so much for being here, guys. If you wouldn't mind, before you go, please dominate that like button for me. And hey, maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, a pilot somewhere gets their wings. Oh yeah, and follow me on Instagram and you can shoot me any ideas for videos or any questions that you have on there. Would love to connect with you there. Thanks so much, guys. And most of all, I hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.